So this is the Porsche 914. This is the 1976. Uh, you may have seen me on the TV show Garage Rehab, but when I'm not fixing up garages, I'm actually at my personal shop out in Maryland, and I have a huge love for European cars. So I just wanted to kind of quickly show some people, if you're looking at 914s, what to look for, uh, kind of things like how do they operate, the trunks, the doors, the little switches, the engine compartment, how much room is in the car. Um, so I'm six foot two, this is a small car, but I tell you what, there is a lot of space in here. So there's another video of me uh, kind of getting into the car, but as you can see here, there's a lot of space. Now I went with the smaller Momo Prototipo steering wheel, but still a lot of headroom and uh, this is with the top on. So obviously, you know, the top does come off on these cars. Yeah. So we're gonna do a quick run around on the car and show you some of the details and what to look for if you're in the market for buying a 914 or if you're just curious on what this uh, weird little German car is. All right, here is a uh, 1976 Porsche 914 two liter. Uh, the Porsche 914 ran from 1969 to 1976, so this would be the last model made. Um, as you can see here, yeah, it's, it's had the big rubber bumpers replaced with a fiberglass bumper, and we kind of went with like a two-tone color to it, just to give it some uh, contrast. But yeah, these are really neat cars, so what we're going to do is I'm going to run through uh, kind of some of the small details on like how the trunk works, the, uh, the front trunk, how the target top comes on and off and just kind of show you a couple things about it uh unfortunately this car just sold this week so i will not be able to drive it for you guys i do have another video on that and uh but there's a lot of 914 videos of them driving here you can see it's got the uh polished fuchs these were introduced in 1973 and went all the way to 1976 these are my favorite and as you can tell those are four lug wheels so that would uh indicate it's a four cylinder a lot of people will ask you, is it a six? That's probably one of the most frequent questions you will get. No, it's not a six. And the 914.6 is pretty rare with a, a hair over 3,000 made and a total of about 119,000 914s were made in total. So, you know, unless you're at like a Porsche car show, you're probably not gonna see a 914.6. And in all the years of me doing 914s, uh, that was actually one of my first cars. My very first car was a 75 914. And I tell you, I've never seen a 914.6 just sitting in disrepair and in needing of savings. So you probably won't find one of those. This one has the uh, dual triad exhaust, pretty cool. Just kind of gives it like a throaty kind of sound to it. It does have the backdated heat exchangers. So if you're learning about 914s for the first time, you will know that the heat comes from the exhaust. Since this is an air-cooled motor, there is no coolant for a heater for So. You're gonna get the heat from the exhaust. It's basically some tins that go around the headers and that supplies the heat into the car. So this actually has a backdated setup to get rid of the catalytic converter. This is with the top removed and you can see it's got two adjustable seats. The passenger adjustable seat came out right after 1972. Before that, you had a fixed passenger seat that was not adjustable. So that's an easy way to tell uh, what year the car is if you're finding one or just kind of looking around for one. This one has the optional center console with the three gauges there, which is pretty neat. Um, the prices on these are actually starting to go up a little bit. So just be careful when you're buying one, make sure that they're, uh, that they're not too badly rusted out if you're looking for a driver. Unfortunately, they did mount the battery right in the back here. We will get to that in a second. And the non-sealed batteries would leak battery acid onto the suspension joints. And since there is no roof, it will actually sag and you'll see by like your door jams you want to make sure that the door jams are not touching so that's another thing you can look for um you know just kind of checking some things out for you You can see these door handles they're made of pop metal so they will break this one's been replaced and uh, a lot of times like the mirrors will kind of go missing after you know 40 some years a lot of the parts are getting hard to find and they are costing a pretty penny now so but yeah, they're really cool cars, you know, flip up headlights. You got a trunk in the front. A lot of Porsche guys like to call that a frunk. And that is where you're gonna get the gas. So we're gonna show you kind of how the front trunk opens, how to put gas in it, 
and uh, we'll show you the rear trunk, and that is where the target top will be stored. This one has the lowered ride height. Now, on a, most air-cooled VWs and Porsches, you can actually lower the front because it's a torsion bar setup. So it's really just finding the correct size socket and a wrench, and you can crank it down a little bit, kind of give it a more aggressive look. But uh, I usually like to set them to about your ride height. This one does have stiffer torsion bars in the front, Kony adjustable shocks all the way around, and actually a coilover spring strut style in the rear, so you can adjust it down or up as need be. This is more of like a sports purpose build or an autocross car, you know, HPDE. It's a little slow for big courses just because it still has the four cylinder in it, um, and you'll be running with a lot of newer cars. But just around town, autocross, they're great. This one does have the PMB rebuilt rear calipers, which is a must. The e-brake does work on this one, which is kind of rare on some of these older uh, driver 914s. You'll see that the brakes are some of the bigger problems and getting them adjusted right is, it's a little bit of an art, but once it's done, it brakes amazingly. And this one actually has BMW 320i front calipers. It's a little bit larger. And I've removed the factory brake bias so it's uh that's been deleted so it's got a good brake bias on it now and uh yeah so it's kind of neat you get your turn signals up there you flip up headlights your front grills here is where some of them would have your factory driving lights and this one has the le limited edition uh front spoiler now nothing big because when it comes to 914s man in the 70s these things were modified like crazy. You will see fiberglass flares molded onto them, four to five, six different paint color changes on them, thick, thick paint, and uh, just weird things, body kits and hideous wheels. I've seen it all. I've, I've seen everything. So this one is kind of like how I like them, where it's uh, what we consider a narrow body, which most 914s were like that. I believe maybe there was like 11, you know, 916s or something, yet there was probably 11,000 916 body kits made for these things. So it's pretty ridiculous. You'll see the different blends in the back between the taillights that'll say Porsche because a lot of people wanted to prove it was a Porsche, not a Volkswagen, but really it's all part of the family. I never, you know, that never really bothered me. This one, the previous owner did put the Porsche script on the bottom, but I thought it kind of had a cool look to it. So I'll keep it. Now this one's been fitted with a front mount oil cooler there. But as you can see, this is how you'd be getting your gas. I know it's a, it's a little funky, but people love to ask the questions when you're at the gas station, kind of filling up. Uh, it's neat, it's very interesting. Let's go over to the engine compartment and you'll see that this is how you open the engine. Now, this one does not have the rain tray, so I just kind of placed my hand right over the grill so it doesn't slap up really hard. But uh, because this is a carburetor conversion, Usually it should have had fuel injection, so the rain tray that fits here uh, would actually block the carburetor. So a lot of them, people just remove those, it's fine. But that's where it is. That's about all the room you get to work on the car. Now, I have the battery disconnected right here for storage. This, uh, this vehicle has been sold and waiting for pickup, but I figured I would just do a quick rundown on what to look for. Now, when people say the 914 hellhole, what they're talking about is on the original batteries and some of the older batteries in the 70s, when they're not sealed, they'll actually leak the battery acid down below the battery tray onto that suspension joint. You'll see a lot of rust there. You'll see a lot of bad repairs. It's gonna be a little too tight and dark for me to show you, but this one is dry. This is a Southern California car, and this one is very dry. That's why I bought this car. This one has 23,000 original miles on it, and it was an autocross car for a long time. So it already had some like suspension goodies and everything. I just had to freshen it up. You know, I had to do brakes, shifter adjustment, things like that. And I will show you here, this is where the Targa top would live. So it fits pretty neat. Um, I'll actually go ahead and just uh, pop that on for you. You can see one person can do it. And you just lift it up and pop her down there like that. Kind of look for the alignment and that's it. So it actually only takes a couple of minutes. You just got a, uh, some clips in the back, some two latches in the front. You can have this thing off in less than a minute and store it away into the trunk. You can see this one has a MSD ignition system in it. I went with like a kind of a track tire. This is what we would call a plus size tire. This is a 205 50 So that'll give you an idea of what it looks like. 
And uh, yes, this car has been lowered, as I've mentioned before. And these are those Fuke wheels that are really cool and they haven't been chromed or repolished. I mean, they're in original condition. And this is an easy way to tell if it's a four cylinder or a six cylinder. As you'll see, this one has four lugs. So it's four by 130 millimeters versus your normal Porsche fitment, which is five by 130 millimeters, indicating it's a six cylinder. Um, most six cylinders are still narrow body. Uh, there was a couple of variations there with 916s and uh, the M471 package or whatever it is where they had actually a steel fender flare that came out. And that's what you'd see a lot of the cars in the 70s racing videos. A lot of those cars were raced. Uh, not a lot of them, you know, kept for private ownership. But you can see that's the trunk. This is your engine compartment knob. Your e-brake is actually on the left-hand side there. And uh, you can see it's up all the way because it's adjusted correctly. It doesn't get in the way of the driver coming in and out. You have a dog leg style transmission, which means the first gear is actually down and to the left. So this is kind of cool. Um, adjusted correctly. And being that this is a side shift 914 rather than the early tail shifter 914, when they're adjusted, they actually shift very well just go slow with your shifts this is not a modern car where you can slam the gear so you go slow with the shifts they're long shifters so yeah you got your flip up headlights your hazard light switches your vents for your you know your heat and your fresh air and uh inside here is actually where the heater tubes are and the heat comes from the heat exchanger and comes through the heater tubes here so you actually see the cars will rust out pretty bad inside here so when you're looking for a 914 to buy just kind of peel up some carpet, look underneath, make sure everything is solid. And you'll also see by the way the doors open and close that if the gap is pretty normal here, uh, you should be fine. Now, when it's closed up top, when these are almost touching, that's a good indication that there is rust under here in that hellhole area and in these longs and actually causing the car to flex. Since this has a fiberglass target top, uh, there's not a lot of roof rigidity for the vehicle. So you'll actually see them flip. I, I've had so many 914s that I've gotten some where you pull the top off and then you can't open the door or you put the vehicle on the lift and then it almost wants to break in half. So yeah, that's, that's probably why I've had 15 of these by now. But this one I found out in Virginia and I made a deal with the guy and because it had 23,000 miles on it and because there was history with the car and being a Southern California car and kind of an autocross look, I fell in love with it. Now I spent all summer redoing it and trying to bring back most of that paint. Some of it has been repainted, but always original black. And I've never had a black 914. And if I have, it was, uh, it was probably a mess. So this one was really cool. Like I said, it does not have the big rubber bumpers. It has the fiberglass bumpers now. Um, unfortunately, it doesn't have the factory mirrors anymore, but I'm okay as long as it's a period correct style mirror on there. I think it looks fine. Uh, it's going to be hard for you to find a deal on a 914 driver condition car that doesn't have a couple of modifications and a, and a couple of changes to it. With the values of these cars going up, they're getting harder and harder to find. And, and you know, it's a, it's a funny thing because when these cars, even a couple years ago, they were so cheap. And so when you buy them now at a higher price, you're wondering like, well, why does it have this kind of wiring? Or why, why did somebody bolt these kind of wheels up? Or the rust repair was done so bad. Well, you gotta understand that when the cars aren't worth a lot, you're gonna get some crappy repairs. You're gonna get some crappy modifications to it because, well, somebody doesn't wanna dump a lot of money into it. They weren't a collector car for a long time. And it, it took a while for the 914 to kind of come into its own. So I can understand that, you know, now we're, we're doing better repairs to it. You know, we're putting better parts on it. Our metal is better. Our rubber is better. There's a lot of companies out there that can replace most every kind of rubber trim that comes on these 914s. And honestly, this is a good car to rebuild, especially because it's an air-cooled motor. It only takes a little over an hour. You can drop that motor in trans. It doesn't take up a lot of room in your shop or garage, and you can restore it and you can tinker with it. A good family project car right here. And uh, there's just not a lot to it. So even a paint job, there's not a lot of body panels here to paint. It's a pretty small car. It doesn't take up a lot of room. You can see, uh, you know, you open the door. You got your, your dome light here. You can set that up for when the door turns on. Your latches, you know, you just flip that sun visor down and your latch just kind of goes on, twists around and locks. So you got one in the front and then in the back, 
I don't know if you can see, it's probably pretty dark, but it's got a little latch, and that's it.